I grew up in a small town uh, in Manitoba, very small, probably under a thousand people. And as a kid, the only things to do for fun were play on sports teams or take music lessons. So I was on every team, baseball, volleyball, track and field. I competed in singing, dance, piano competitions and from a very young age I knew what competition was and I thought that you were treated differently if you were the best, if you were talented. So that's what I wanted to be, I wanted to be the best and I thought once I was then I would have more friends, then boys would notice me, then my parents would stop fighting and be proud of me then I would be happy like the other girls and then I would finally be someone because I had this voice inside of my head that told me if you're not the best then who are you and nobody remembers the person that comes in second place so I set expectations for myself that were so high and often felt like a disappointment like a failure or like a let down my team, my family, myself. And I would cry on the way home from games or competitions because I wasn't good enough, because I didn't feel like I was good enough. And even when I was, it didn't feel like I wanted it to. It never satisfied me. Maybe it did for a moment, but then it was gone because it was straight on to the next thing. I didn't realize that I was caught in such a vicious cycle. I didn't realize that there would always be another competition, that there would always be somebody who was better, smarter, prettier, more talented. And I didn't realize that as long as I based my identity on my accomplishments, then I would always have to work for it. And then a friend of mine told me about God and he told me that in him I have an identity that's fixed that doesn't waver with my success or failure but is completely dependent on the fact that I'm his daughter and that he loves me. I had always believed that if something's too good to be true it's not and that if you don't have to work for it fight for it, then you don't deserve it. And nothing in life is ever handed to you. But in that moment, I was being told that there was one exception to all those rules that I believed, and that was God's love. I was 17, and it felt like I was hearing this for the very first time. And I don't know how to explain it, but it seemed like the entire world was lifted off of my shoulders, and I felt free. Constant competition and constant comparison had drove me to try to be someone who was so perfect and drove me to try to be someone who was known simply for her accomplishments and known as undeniably talented. But that was exhausting and it never gave me what I wanted. I built my identity on something that was so shaky and then I wondered why everything seemed to crumble beneath my feet. And now I choose to build my identity on a never changing, always good almighty God who says that I'm perfect no matter what I do, succeed or fail. And it's not dependent on who I am, but on who he is and what he's done for me. And he's the one that gives me purpose and joy and security. And I know now that I've already received the greatest award that I ever could in this life. And because of that, I can feel secure in who I am and grateful for the person that God has made me.